Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday. Coffee time. <laughs> it's actually Wednesday morning, so I was exhausted last night, so hence I am up this morning to make the video. Uh, a lot of us talk, and I'm not saying here, I'm saying prepper people, all of us, content creators, viewers, whatever it would be, okay? A lot of us talk, plan, and consider those first few days, first few months, first few weeks of any event. And that's what we prep for, okay? We have food, you know, whether it's a month, three months, six months, a year, two years, whatever it is, 30 years, you know, your mountain house or whatever you got. We talk about all sorts of stuff, okay? But it, it's all geared on that. It, it's all short-term thinking. And I'm as guilty as anybody else of it, okay? And so I was thinking yesterday, overnight in my sleep, yeah, I dream this stuff, believe it or not. Uh, what about the longer term, okay? Because... We all know you cannot be 100% prepared. There is going to be an issue that comes up that you never thought of, that you are not prepared for whatever would be, okay? And you are going to have to figure it out on the fly. We know it. For those people who are lone wolves, we've talked about that forever. If that's, if that's your plan, like I said, your prepping is real easy. Buy a shovel, dig a six-foot hole, you're done. Okay. Uh, for the rest of us who understand that groups and eventually community is going to be what it's going to take to survive any post-event, that's what I'm talking about here. Okay. Most of us have built or in the... Or well, I won't say have built because you're never done, uh, are in the process of building mags of some sort, okay? And whether you've got two people in it or ten at this point, I will tell you this, it ain't enough. There's going to be situations that arise that no matter what, how well prepared you are in your mag, you don't have somebody with the skills, somebody with the ability to take care of what you need done, all right? And I will give you just a couple examples, all right? You have one vehicle in the mag, and it has a problem and won't start. And it's the only way you can get down to the lake, down, down to the creek, and carry water. Do you have somebody in the group who knows major engine repair? And I'm not talking about ordering parts from Napa and putting them on, I'm talking about major engine repair where they can jerry-rig something to work. You know, do you have a mechanic like that? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Okay. What if you have a situation where somebody falls down, breaks a leg? Do you have somebody in the group who has enough medical knowledge to set that leg so it doesn't have to be amputated sometime, okay? What if somebody gets shot? Do you have somebody in the mag who has the ability to remove the remove the, the bullet and repair any of the damages? As much as we all <clears throat> say, I've got, you know, medical kits and stuff like that, I seriously doubt most mags have somebody who can stitch up a spleen or... Uh, you know, something like, or a kidney, you know, I mean, wounds that are deadly, but in an SHTF situation, if you got the right people, maybe it's not, okay? If you don't, it's certainly deadly, okay? This is where I say community comes into play. <clears throat> because as I've said many times, either you built your mag or you're going to be in one by default, okay? If 
no matter what happens in an SHTF situation, whether it's World War III, whether it's uh, a long-term power outage, wh whatever it's going to be, your neighborhood, your the locals, okay, are somehow going to have to work together. Now, if there are preppers in your locals, you're good. If there's not, you know, then you then there's going to be an issue because obviously those people are are going to be after creature comforts and they're not creature comforts, but I mean necessities. You know, if it's in your neighborhood, obviously they've got the shelter part taken care of, but food and water is going to become scarce real quick. All right, so not that any of us want to barter food, but if your kid just broke their leg and dock up the street can set it, but he wants 20 pounds of ground beef in return, I'm betting you're probably going to give Doc 20 pounds of ground beef. Right? You're going to have to find these other people, whether you want to or not, okay? Because they are going to become a necessity some things are easier than others. Sure. I mean, you can struggle, you can fail. I mean, y'all know about me and gardening. I've done it long enough and by no means am I an expert. Okay. But I know more than most or know more than some, at least let's put it that way. But it's still something that even if you fail, if you try enough, you know, if you go out and put out a thousand bean seeds, some of them are going to give you beans. Okay. So, I mean, but I can't do that with medical, with repair, with whatever, some of those, some of those more specialized skills, those people are going to be very, very, very important. And none of us are cannon fodder, but you can pretty quickly teach somebody how to use a weapon if they've got one. Okay. Uh, it's not rocket science to, you know, point and shoot. <clears throat> Whether they're any good is a different question. That takes practice. But to use the thing, at least, it's not rocket science. You're going to have to deal with this situation. And I'll give you these questions. You know, what comes around goes around. We all know that saying, okay? Karma, however you want to put it. I've said a couple of times, what are you going to do if a seven-year-old kid all by himself shows up on your front doorstep? I know a lot of people say, well, somebody shows up on my doorstep, I'm going to give them a can of beans and, you know, a bag of potatoes and send them on their way. But what if it's a seven-year-old kid? Are you going to take them in? Okay. What if it's a pregnant woman? Are you going to take her in? We all have great ideas of grandeur. You know, I'm going to stand my ground and do nothing. I'm not helping anybody. It's all for me. And I'm guilty in a lot of respects of that too, okay? No way am I perfect by a long shot. There's going to be a lot of decisions you're going to have to make on your feet, okay? And morality is going to come into play. You know, what is the right thing to do? This is what sets us apart from, right now, the enemy, okay? The communists, either in China or in Washington, okay? What's the right thing to do never crosses their mind, okay? What's, what, the only thing that crosses their mind is what they can do for themselves. Most of humanity looks at what's the right thing to do. That seven-year-old shows up, that pregnant woman shows up at my house. Yeah, I'm probably going to take them in. I'm going to check out, make sure that they are not booby-trapped or armed or anything like that. I'm not going to be, oh, welcome to the family, blah, 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 blah. You know, they're going to be well scrutinized, okay? But there's a lot of things that you're going to have to figure out on the fly. And we all kind of get tunnel vision with prepping. I need to do for me. I need to do for me. I need to do for me. And eventually there's going to be times, and some of y'all are there. I mean, I think of you know, Voodoo Queen is a perfect example of what can I do for everybody else? You know, she knows she's got herself pretty well taken care of. So now she's branching out and storing food for other people and helping other people, things like that, okay? That's getting to the pinnacle of preparation when you're 
when you're past taking care of you and you're now taking care of community. That's what we should all be striving for. Right now, most of us are in the take care of me area, era, okay? But it's going to be very important to figure out how to take care of us because there is going to come a day where we come out of an SHTF event and society is going to have to be put back together. You know, we're not going to have 10 million little 30 person tribes in the United States. We're going to have to start to assimilate and put the country back together or Australia or Canada or whatever it would be. That's something to think about, because like I said, what comes around, goes around, right? And if you help somebody, the pregnant woman, the seven-year-old, whatever it would be, you have the doctor, you have the mechanic, whatever it is, there's going to be a situation where that person's going to remember it, and they're going to have your butt, too. There's something to think about. Have a good Wednesday. Come out.